This presentation is brought to you by the Beljanski Foundation. Over 50 years of research towards curing cancer the natural way. Ah, oh, glad you're here. Just glad that uh, there are so many people interested in learning everything that they can. So much good information here. And um, what I have to contribute is something that I never knew in 1990, four years before the phenomenon was even discovered. Never knew that I had stumbled on by feel and pieced together a way of harnessing a hormone that was already in my body. It's in all of us. You don't have to take a pill. And harnessing it accidentally. How did I know that something had changed in my body that I was going to, if it was the last thing I did, make sure that I felt that way for the rest of my life? How did I know? Well, when you feel as bad as I did, and many of you have gone through hitting bottom in whatever it is that you've dealt with with your health. I had had an eating disorder since the age of 12, and this is, believe me, going to go way beyond eating disorders. But mine hit, uh, sorry, came to a head physically uh, about 12 years later. I had moved from the Midwest, Michigan, where I grew up on horrible food. And yes, I learned what real food was in New York City, working in the fashion world of all places with models as this very overweight person who in this picture here and, and that picture right there on the left, was teaching six or seven dance classes a week as a human pair. That was one of my nicknames. And the other one of my nicknames was one that I would rather not say right here. And uh, at that point, while I was being ex extremely physical active, my health started to fall apart. I wasn't digesting anymore. And the doctor said, you got to go to a liver specialist. Your liver's failing. And they checked, and there was no virus. It was autoimmune. And I thought, wow, uh, and they wanted me to go on a drug called interferon. And I, it wasn't, we didn't even have the internet yet. So I went to a bookstore and I looked up interferon and it said, it usually doesn't work and it causes depression. And this, I was a person who was already, you know, you would have uh, diagnosed me as bipolar. Uh, I was always really, really up or even uh, staying in bed three days at a time. And I mean doing nothing except for using the bathroom and staying in bed, uh, writing reasons to live on my in my journal, and binging myself into what I call uh, elation, sedation, incapacitation uh, on, a, on a nightly uh, basis, sometimes more than once in, in during the day. And again, this is something that was started back when I was 12 years old, went on my first diet, starved myself, and that led to my first binge. And please keep that in mind, you fasting enthusiasts who aren't metabolically really uh, hardy. Uh, and then this came to this point where my health was falling apart, no longer digesting. Uh, horrible rashes on my chin, uh, my <laughs> eyelids, crepiness. Uh, but I mean, it real, oozing. And, and I couldn't even put makeup on it. And uh, to be in the fashion world and have that going on was quite something. Um, and so I uh, start to read at a health food store. So I went from the bookstore where I learned about interferon and walked up a few blocks on Broadway on the Upper West Side to a health food store. And I looked at all the books. That, and for the first time, I'm not looking at calorie counts. I'm just looking at liver, liver, liver. OK, they all say to take all oh, these herbs and maybe some alpha lipoic acid, milk thistle. So I just bought them. And you know, I usually went to those stores to buy my raw food dessert, of which I could eat maybe four or five at a sitting, no problem. <laughs> I heard a yeah out there. <laughs> and so I um, went home with these herbs and started taking these herbs. And I went back to uh, the liver specialist at New York Hospital, Dr. Harvey Lieberman. And he uh, three times went back and he measured my uh, liver enzymes, most of them initially up in the six or 700 range. And that's like next day hospital, okay? And they went down 200 points the first time. And I thought that's because I'm trying not to binge as badly. I didn't believe in the power of herbs and things. Two more appointments back, he hit his desk and said, what did you do? And I go, what? And he goes, your enzymes are normal. He had never seen that. And I started telling him I took these herbs, and he just shooed me out of the office. And I was in a 
surreal state because I couldn't believe it was normal. I wasn't quite ready to believe the herbs could have been responsible for that, but I was irreversibly intrigued and can, walked back into that health food store and looked at a book called The Sugar Blues, a book called The Yeast Connection, a book called Why Am I So Depressed, and another book called Why Am I So Tired. That was about the thyroid. So I started taking for the thyroid some iodine and, and some L-tyrosine, and the Why Am I So, or the Sugar Blues said take some chromium, vanadyl sulfate, and then, well, hello. <laughs> and then, uh, and then there I started taking St. John's wort for depression, okay? And I started taking all of these things. And if I would have known more, or we would have known more yet, I would have probably taken 5-HTP instead of the St. John's wort. Long story short, I became a believer in these things, but I didn't really believe until at one point when I was in the shower about to cover myself with a lotion so that my skin wouldn't be screaming. And I mean one of those extra, extra, extra dry skin things that I covered myself with every single time I bathed. And realized that not only my skin wasn't screaming, wasn't even dry, and I hadn't had a rash. It took that for me to actually truly and deeply believe that only the choices I made on the inside had that dramatic of an effect. I still had my eating disorder. I was still binging. However, I started to see my body change a little. I started to see a little contour in my legs, and I started to sort of notice I was sort of staying the same weight when I should have gained weight and maybe losing a little when I should have stayed the same. I knew biochemically things were different, and also the black hole feeling, and anybody who's ever had an addiction of any kind here, and some even who maybe have never admitted to themselves that they had or have any kind of an addictive tendency, there's a little black hole feeling when you really got to have something. And it can be as strong as burnout dopamine receptors where your receptors in your brain are looking burnout just as much so as someone who's addicted to heroin and a heavy alcoholic. Okay, It's the same in a binge eater the way that I was. It was very powerful. Little did I know that what I would soon harness would fix my dopamine pathways and actually literally turn addiction into motivation in addition to fixing the autonomic nervous system and autoimmunity so that you wouldn't be sensitive to anything anymore. And even in recent science, balancing the endocannabinoid system and balancing the autonomic nervous system so that fight or flight is converted to rest, calmness, even when you're in full energy, being calm. It's an amazing phenomenon that has happened. And I wouldn't get the explanation for it. Well, I don't want to jump ahead. Here's what happened. I had this five-hour stretch where I was, didn't even think about food, and that was a miracle. So I went from after breakfast until about 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock never came without me, even at 11 o'clock, starting to think about what whole grain I was going to have at lunch. I could make a hard drug out of a plate of brown rice, even quinoa. It all depends on your metabolic thresholds, okay? And so I had this day where 2 o'clock came, and not only did I not think about food, but I did not have this very heavy sense of depression, impending doom, anxiety that I lived with, a solid, every day, just this horrible feeling, this heavy feeling, and it was gone as though my head was floating over my body. And I said, what in the world was that? And I thought, what did I do differently today? And I noticed a couple things, but this feeling wouldn't last for more than a few hours. It wasn't until a year and a half later that I got it to last 24-7, and I would not have believed it, but some kind of turning or tipping point happened at that point, because overnight, literally the next day, my rings were spinning, and this was flat. Overnight, no exaggeration. I look into my refrigerator, and all of the food in there doesn't look like food to me. Overnight. And I had recently gone shopping. I didn't know what I was going to go shopping for. Three days later, this seven-year vegetarian spontaneously ate meat. No regrets. Pretty unbelievable how I felt for several, several days after that, in addition to how I was already feeling. Three years, ten dress sizes off of me. Never weighed myself, ever. I have no idea what I weigh. And I knew my every nano part of every pound that I gained or lost for those 12 years. And uh, I am not recognizable standing two feet in front of someone that I went to high school with. And uh, I remember this happening, and he was actually angry that I was claiming to be who I was. And so this, I wonder, wow, 
and it's happening every day. I'm waking up every day and thinking, Santa Claus exists. It's unbelievable. I mean, I, I woke up in this unbelievable state of freedom every day, and it's 30 years later now, and I'm still waking up in that unbelievable state. Thank you. And so a few years into this, in my family, for four years, they didn't believe this was anything different than anything I'd ever done before that you know would eventually come to an end. And it didn't come to an end at all. In fact, uh, my careers, I had two of them. I don't talk about at these expos that I was also a very budding singer and, and jingle singer and performed one-woman shows to critical acclaim in New York City. And this is after I lost the weight. Okay, and, uh, and then um, I had another career. I was a major makeup artist. In fact, I, maybe I'll start using this um, and show you. I, I worked with Martha Stewart and Sarah Jessica Parker and Kate Hudson, um, and I was probably the most quoted makeup artist of the late 90s. And I represented Max Factor Maybelline. I wound up singing a Maybelline jingle. And they didn't know. I'm going to in the studio, and I wanted to say, "I'm your makeup artist," but I didn't. Um, and uh, so this is what I was doing, talking about what color eyeshadow goes where, and what kind of lipstick will make your teeth look the whitest. Who wanted to hear about how I transform myself beyond recognition? I know you guys do, but not the audience of these magazines in general, okay? And certainly not the PR companies. So let me go to ooh. I'm going to go to some more images. All right. So before I continue, um, so I am just sought after to, to be a makeup artist spokesperson, and eventually I said I have to uh, I have to write the truth about beauty because this ain't the truth. And I, I think there's a well, that's the cover of my book on the right. That's the book right there uh, on the left uh, on this that image. And that book was just what I was allowed to write. It was not the program that I've honed that makes the same biochemical flip, which I wouldn't understand until the greatest coincidence 14 years later, when I was actually on a book signing, the hormone leptin had been discovered four years after I harnessed it. And that discovery led them to think they had a blockbuster drug of all time for weight loss. And they named it the satiety hormone because they injected it into rodents and they had lost weight. Well, it's the, it's, first of all, it's not weight loss. It's a regulator. If you're underweight, it will put pure muscle and bone on you. Uh, and, uh, but then in 2004, I was at a book signing for the first edition of my book. And the, and this is an incredible coincidence. The foremost clinical expert on the hormone leptin and also the foremost expert in the world on insulin, a mentor to Dr. Joe Mercola and the favorite doctor of Tony, Tony Robbins. And he happened to be on that book signing, signing a book too after me. And he stood there and listened to me describe this phenomenon that I had made happen in other people for seven years by that time through my cruises and, and retreats and, and online classes. And uh, he, his jaw dropped. And he said, and, and I go, I know, what did I get wrong? Because I was talking about it only works if you find this magic ratio that's individual to everyone because your heredity and the history of your blood sugar spikes and, and fasting even uh, can kind of damage this epigenetically. But you have to make up for that. And then I tell people, not with numbers, but by symptom, how to regain sensitivity, which I would learn on that day was in the hypothalamus mostly to a hormone, which I learned on that day, was leptin. Not to be confused with lectin, okay? L-E-P-T-I-N. It is, it is regulating everything right now or not. And it's not working in, in, in almost anybody, if not everybody except for me in this room. And I mean even slim people, okay? Um, it, and I used to think, oh, it's just heavy people. And then into about, you know, the 98th retreat that I've done <laughs> by this time, where I'm about to do my 98th, I've done 97. Uh, you realize, wow, every athlete, every slim person, you know, every husband, uh, you know, reluctantly dragged to this by their wife initially. Now a lot of men come to these programs um, because I've worked with with major athletes, Olympic athletes, and I've worked with a Caesar, season three trainer from The Biggest Loser here. Did something for her in every aspect, every drug she's off of. Her Cushing's is gone. Her period is back. Her career. 
and and uh, all of these people have things. Men or women, fat or thin, are completely uh, transformed by this. And so on that day, I learned that I had harnessed leptin. And so since then, stem cell doctors, neurologists, fertility clinics, functional medicine doctors of all kinds are seeing there's not an issue that it doesn't affect. And you can look up the 8,000 plus studies. The frontier is applying the science. The science is there on cancer, Parkinson's, Lou Gehrig's disease, uh, dementia, certainly seizures, auras, headaches, allergies. It modulates immunity. It balances the endocannabinoids. That's incredible. It lengthens tel telomeres, not more leptin, more better. You're lowering leptin, and that's the whole misunderstanding, even on the internet. And, uh, and my relationship with uh, the foremost clinical expert who stood in front of diabetes doctors with me and said, here's the science on leptin, now do her diet. And being told by the number one guy in Canada, there's no one making happen outside of a lab what you've been doing for 30 years. And I'd love to tell you more about it. There's an at-home, self-paced way, no less than 12 hours, always divided into four modules. You can learn this either on your own, self-paced, or it's just starting up now my fall. I do it four years, three months, where it's spread out and paced, this 12-hour curriculum, because you do the first part and you achieve this incredible state in a very austere way where I can be sure that everybody at every different individual metabolic threshold achieves it. And there are five ways to prepare for it so that that second and third day, which could be uncomfortable, that that discomfort can be mitigated and then you will lose fluid and urinate a lot on day three and four. You will look different, be probably off your CPAP machine and, and using your blood pressure cuff probably see something pretty surprising. Uh, and that's almost always blood sugar, blood pressure immediately. I'm not claiming a cure. I blame it all on leptin and it's all coincidence. But if you make a time to come up to my booth, you're going to read about a lot of coincidences. Incredible, from cancer to everything. And, and that is time. Thank you very much.